My name is Michael Dudoktovitz and this is my film The Monk and the Fish.
So how would the film's director explain the story? Yeah, the story is actually very, very simple because it's basically one character chasing another, just like we see dogs chasing cats and all other other cartoons. the The only difference is that in, in normally in films you have got a big twist at the end or a big gag at the end, and here it was a more poetic ending. So basically, the story is about one character chasing another, and at the end they come together. It started as an idea and some drawings of a monk. This was the very first drawing I did for The Monk and the Fish. And I did it years before I actually made the film. I was just playing around um, with shape and I thought it would be perfect to um, use a monk in a film. Wouldn't it be nice because graphically it is a nice shape, it's a nice blob. Um, because they are early drawings, I've, the monk has evolved since. So here, for instance, his head is way too big. He looks like a child and, and not like an um, adult. And the same here, and most of the drawings his head is too big. Um, this I found a bit messy, all the lines in his clothing and, and the fact that his legs separate. Later I simplified him and just made him, make, made him a very, very simple triangular shape. Michael gets down to work to show how he drew one of the many thousands of pictures he needs for his film, using just a pencil. Oh, the, pe the pencil is still the perfect tool. You can draw lines, and you can. Some of my best drawings I actually did while while not thinking about what I was doing, or even while talking with someone else, just doodling randomly. There's something very simple and pure about the monk. They, they, he hasn't got a complicated life. He just lives in one place, um, and and that's it. He lives there his whole life. He probably spends a lot of time alone or or, or doing simple things. He is not trendy, he is not um, sexy or something. He's just got this big, loose habit. If I want to make him exciting, um, typically he, he would lift his arms, he would spread his arms and lift his arms. When, when, when he's really intense, um, the animation becomes much faster. I would um, really make him jump up and down and, and have him much wilder in, in all his body language. The pencil is only the first stage. Michael then uses ink and paint to give the drawings their individual style. Well, I, I could say a pencil line is good enough for the animation and that's how it will look like. But um, for, for this particular film, I prefer to go over the line with um, a brush and, and black ink, really strong black ink, because I just like the, the ink line. It's really, really rich. It's, it varies from like a tenth of a millimeter to, to a really thick line. And on top of that, I've chosen in this film to, to add a lot of shadow. The, um, the character always has a shadow, a part of him which is dark. So the thick black line serves as, as creating the shadow as well. Right. Michael made the decision to only show the monk at a distance. There's not one close-up in the whole film. You always see him at a certain distance. And um, if you would see him close-up, he would probably be horrified because he has no mouth and he has just two blobs for eyes and one blob for the nose. And um, I, I just like visually, I like to keep the monk small. And instead, uh, instead of showing emotions in his face, I show emotions in the way he moves. And in, of course, in the music. And in the general, the general atmosphere of the picture. A second of film is made up of many still images. Each picture changes a tiny bit. When watched together, it looks as though the character moves. An animator will use a few tricks to create this illusion. What, what you do a lot when you're an animator is that you distort the shape. So here he has got a normal shape, but before he jumps up, he's, he, he gets squashed. He becomes flatter and then he, he becomes very long again. And the same here, when he lands, he is very long and then he's really flat and, and low and then he's a normal shape. If you stop frame uh, my animation and you look at drawings frame by frame, some drawings will be really just very bizarre. 
But that's how it is. That's normal because it's when you see the whole sequence of drawings, it fits in. It, it works well. And what about the background? Okay. Now here's again the classic setup. I did um, a simple watercolor on watercolor paper and um, I used um, very, very liquid with nice diluted with clean water. Then on top of that I apply a layer, a cell layer with black ink lines. And when I'm happy with that, when it's all dry, I, I draw the animation on top of that. Before Michael began drawing, he planned the film carefully using a storyboard. A storyboard is a series of simple pictures and notes that show, scene by scene, how the film develops. People shouldn't spend ages on the quality of the drawing, as long as they are clear. And sometimes the, the, the story has to be explained a bit with um, uh, bits of text on the side. Just very, very simple, not, not going in details like every, every little joke or every little um, camera movement, but just very simp simply to, to understand the story. Michael worked with a composer to develop the film's soundtrack. And I asked him, can you do something, um, can you compose something that's really suitable for, for the film? <laughs> And we worked backwards and forwards for quite a few weeks where he, ch he adapted his music to my film and I adapted my, my story to his music. And then I analyzed the music. I really, really chose all the accents and all the rhythms. Um, and I animated virtually all the animation to, to the timing of the music. Can you see and hear how the monk's movements are mirrored in the music? Sometimes Michael may make as many as 50 final drawings for one second of animated film. Why does he do it? The idea of making a film, that, that's magical and that motivates me. And um, it's, it's not something you feel as, as a task you have to do. You're just curious, you do, you do it out of fun. Mm -hmm. 